uh, discuss an image formation by first a converging lens and then add in a diverging lens and see how that um, adjusts the location of our image. So we're dealing with an object that's 23 centimeters to the left of the converging lens. So I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to use DO for the object distance. It's positive to the left of the lens, so 23 centimeters. And the object has a height of 1.5 centimeters. So this is not all to scale. I had to compress a little bit to keep it on the page. We have a converging lens with a focal length of 10 centimeters. So right here is the focal length for our converging lens. And there's a focal length on each side of the lens. And we want, I'm going to ignore the diverging lens for the first uh, ray tracing. We're going to locate the image uh, due just to the first converging lens. So we have three rays. I might even attempt to draw them all three. I start with a ray that's parallel to this optic axis, this principal axis. So I'm going to take a ray here, hopefully draw it parallel up to the lens. And we're assuming these are thin lenses, so I'm going to do all the refraction right at this center line. A ray that comes in parallel to the optic axis then heads towards the focal point of that lens. So we'll do a drawing like that. Secondly, a ray that goes through the center of the lens does not have any uh, deviation. It goes through on a straight line. So right here, the center. And I've located this uh, this image. I'm going to, you know, the graphical uh, location of the image is approximate. But I'm going to go ahead and put this third ray on here. If I take a ray that goes through the focal point before reaching the lens, it exits the lens parallel to the optic axis. And I hope I'm not fudging this uh, too badly. I think it's about like this. So they did not meet perfectly, but here would be, and I'm just going to put a dot here, uh, that would be our first image. Now this diverging lens, it's going to cause this light to not focus as quickly. It's going to diverge the light. How do we go about doing its ray tracing? Uh, you can see I'm going to have a little challenge with this, and uh, we'll make the best of it. But as the light and this is a, a negative six centimeters. So I've got the focal length for the diverging lens at this X. As light comes in parallel to a diverging lens, it leaves as if it came from the focal point of the diverging lens. So here's the... Uh, so it's going to be leaving like this. And it's as if it came from that uh, that point. Now I need um, more space here, and I've uh, run into a little situation where the next ray I would like to do would be a ray that comes to this first image, but passed through the uh, center of the diverging lens, so I could get a straight line through there. And I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Um, there would be, if I have a taller lens back here, this converging lens, there's going to be a ray that travels on this path down to the uh, down to the image. And continue that on this first image. Continue that on. And it's this ray and this ray where they meet. So it's just a little bit further that's the location of the second image, final image. And that's not quite as far out as I had hoped it would be. Um, but again, graphical methods are a little bit inaccurate. Um, a little cluttered here on my, my paper, but let's go ahead and work through the calculation. But in doing the ray tracing with two lenses, I ignore the second lens to start with, find the location of the first image, then take a ray that came out of the first lens parallel to the optic axis. 
it's going to, for a diverging second lens, continue here as if it came from the focal point of the diverging lens. If this one would have been a converging lens, then it would have its own focal point up here, and we would head this ray towards it, and we would get a crossing point earlier. Our final image would be pulled in to the left. A diverging lens, our final image is pushed out to the right just a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and do the, the calculations for this. So we have DO is 23 centimeters. We have our focal length is 10 centimeters. And we use our lens equation, 1 over DO plus 1 over DI equals 1 over F. And we've got the numbers, so we'll go ahead and put those in. Uh, 1 over 23 plus 1 over DI, and I'm going to work everything in centimeters, equals 1 over 10. So I need to do 1 over 10 minus 1 over 23. That'll be the 1 over DI value. And then after I find the 1 over DI value, don't forget to invert. Uh, the 1 over 10 minus 1 over 23 is not the answer to DI, the image distance. Uh, it's a number here, but the unknown is in the denominator. So I have to divide the number that is produced uh, into 1 to get the, the correct answer. So if you do 1 over di, and you ought to take just a minute here with your calculator and calculate that. So 1 divided by 10 minus 1 divided by 23 and I'm coming up with 0 0.05652. Then this is over 1. I have to invert both sides or cross multiply, whatever you want to do, but the net result is um, well, that's just a stray mark on the paper. 1 divided by 0 0.05652 gives us our image distance. And that image distance is 17.7 .7 centimeters. 17.7 .7 centimeters. Now, this first image is the object for the second lens. The first image is the object for the second lens. How far is this uh, image away from the second lens? Well, the distance between the two lens was given uh, it's 14 centimeters between the two lenses. The image was 17.7 .7 centimeters. So the image, di, is, if I subtract 14, is 3.7 centimeters to the right. Our image for the second lens, uh, our image of the first lens, becomes the object for the second lens. This image location is 3.7 meters to the right of the second lens. What is the object distance for the second lens? Well, it's not 3.7, it's minus 3.7 centimeters. The object is on the right side and in the convention I'm working through here, it's on the left side where the object is a positive distance. So when the object is on the right side, I have to use a negative. Okay, let's go ahead and do our calculation here and find di sub 2, the final image location. So 1 over minus 3.7 plus 1 over di sub 2 equals 1 over, what number goes here? It's the focal length of the diverging lens, and you must include the minus sign when you do this calculation. So, um, again, you have, have to add 1 over 3.7 to both sides. So, 1 over di sub 2, I'll go ahead and do that, is 1 over minus 6 plus 1 over 3.7. And if I do the calculation of the, uh, the fractions here, and you should do this as well, you get 0 0.1036. That's for 1 over di sub 2. 
So di sub 2 is 9.65 centimeters. 9.65 centimeters. And it is a positive, so it is to the right of the diverging lens. At least my ray tracing has that correctly. This final image is to the right. Now, what's the size of the final image? Well, for that, we need magnification. And we have two stages of magnification here. Each of them is minus di over do. We have to do this twice, once for the converging lens, once for the uh, diverging lens. So the magnification for the converging lens is going to be minus 17.7. .7. The minus sign is part of the definition. So minus 17.7 .7 and over 23. And then the magnification for the diverging lens, we're at 10.36, but there's a minus sign. And divided by the object distance, which was a minus 3.7. So there's our overall magnification. The magnification factor for the converging lens, magnification factor for the diverging lens. And if you multiply these together, you find that the overall magnification, if I round it off, is minus 2. Very nearly minus 2. So I just rounded off a little bit. So the overall magnification is minus 2. The minus sign tells us the image is inverted. The image is inverted. And the height of the image is going to be twice as large as the object. Now well, the object was 1.5 centimeters for its height. So the image is going to be 3 centimeters. And it is going to be inverted. And that agrees with our ray tracing. The arrow tip of the arrow is pointed down for the image. For the object, the tip of the arrow is pointed up. So my ray tracing got a little bit more cluttered than I had hoped, but uh, that just shows you that the ray tracings are inaccurate. The mathematics is accurate, and that's how you do the calculation when two lenses are uh, acting on the light. So keep practicing with that.